are here to conduct an interview for a podcast on government's policy on renewable energy and as commissioner we are glad to have your thoughts first on the general policy framework for scaling up renewable energy in Uganda. We have uh, a number of ambitious targets that we've set out including one specifically to ensure that every Ugandan households, industries and other users uh, transition to clean forms of energy uh, from the fossils or the, or the traditional biomass that they are using for cooking. We have the national roadmap on scaling up uh, the productive use of solar energy. What's the, the status of implementation? The current status is that we are working on phase one. Phase one which looks at the pillars or the requirements for us to run such a roadmap, including ensuring that we have the right technologies, we have built the individual and human capa I mean, institutional capacity for rolling out, but also looking at the policy requirements and the policy options that we would need for making sure that the markets are functional, but also that the users are able to access these technologies at affordable price. That will also go with the need for us to have the right data for sizing the markets and of course the awareness for the consumers yeah. so currently we are working on those pillars the fundamental pillars of rolling out but at the same time there is work that is going on we continue seeing markets starting to pick up for solar being the most mature technology that we have for renewable but also seeing government interest raising through a number of initiatives that we are working on uh, both for private but also government support. In your reply you referred it to us. I understand that could be your ministry. Who are the other partners or the other MDAs you are working with and how is the coordination component? The pillars of our renewable energy policy are private sector and civil society organizations, government and government partners. So in the private sector we have the membership associations that bring together the users of these technologies or those the private sector that deal with these technologies such as the Uganda Solar Energy uh, Association or Alliance if you bring that together but we also have other uh, private sector associations such as UNREA, National Renewable Energy Platform and the others whose aim is to promote energy so from the private sector but we also have a civil society movement uh, that is looking at mainly advocacy for clean energy and solar being one of such. Then in the development partners, we have a number of development partners. AFA Uganda, we work with JIZ, we work with the British uh, FCDO, development arm, and other players, including SNV. Then in the government, we work with Ministry of Agriculture because of their interest in production, but also across their value chain. Ministry of Water and Environment because of their uh, climate action, but also Ministry of Health and Education because those are part of the bigger institutions that are using solar for powering their institutions. So in health, you want to power the cold chain. In education, you want to power the lighting of the schools, but also other key uh, technologies such as the, the, the computers that they use. So we have a whole set, but those are the key players that we work with. As a commissioner, what do you consider the opportunities and challenges for the implementation of this roadmap? Our opportunities and challenges are mainly five and within our theory of transformation we have these listed as PENTA. So the first one is access to quality and standard technology. So that is still a challenge because our market is riddled with substandard products and these kill consumer confidence because then you want to pay for a product that will last for the value of the money. So our first challenge is how to get the market to have the right standard technologies. Then the other one is of course individual but also institutional capacity that uh, would allow institutions to regulate the market but also the individuals to use or to trade or to regulate like for us the policy makers. The other one is around financing, access to affordable, patient and reasonably sized capital is still a challenge for our suppliers but also the consumers. And of course we, we have issues of policies, regulations where we have some policies that we are not implementing. And I'll give an example. In the renewable energy policy, which uh, advocated for a decentralized approach, we've not been able to set up these in structural uh, institutional arrangements up to the local level because then we planned that we'd have the ministry, but at the district we'd have the district energy committee. We'd have local energy committee at sub-county and 
village energy committee that time and now recently we've added the parish energy committee so we are not able to have these institutions in place that would ensure that there is compliance to these policies and regulations so the market has a problem then of course there is a big challenge of awareness data information and knowledge so awareness for people to appreciate that solar can actually do a lot of things is as good as the grid that you see but also awareness among its policy makers and other decision makers to, to know that this is one source of energy that is widely distributed and one that we can use. For the marketers still related to data is where is the data for investment? How do I size this investment? So our challenges are still there and if you turn this around then you have opportunities. Those of you that want to supply products that are quality, there is an opportunity, there is a big business because this is a mature technology. Those that want to do capacity, so we have a number of institutions such as Sendea whose job in the solar market is to train, building human capacity. But financing institutions are quite a number. We have banks and other financing institutions whose job is to provide capital for these users. And of course for us in the policy sector, to ensure that we are providing the right policy environment uh, for the businesses to thrive. Yeah. How is government incentivizing the private sector to promote renewable energy? The first thing that private sector requires is an enabling environment. You have both financial and non-financial incentives. So one example that I would bring out is where government is facilitating partnerships with finance institutions to ensure that the private sector or the suppliers of these products have the resources, the capital to do the business or they are able to de-risk by providing them RBFs or such incentives to reach markets they would not reach. Government is also involved in market activation. We run a number of awareness campaigns to ensure that people appreciate these products. We also have policies that are and incentives around, uh, incentives around the solar market where, for example, you're exempted from certain categorized uh, taxes to ensure that we cut down on the capex and you're able to increase affordability for the consumer. So there are those policies that we've put in place, including the general incentives that we have as a country for investment with the hope that you can recoup your investments uh, to take out of the country. Yes. What is this message for the farmer who wants to integrate renewable energy into technologies in, into farming? The farmer out there and all the other users should appreciate that solar provides energy or is a form of energy and you know energy is a driver. Whether you're producing, especially with this changing climate where rainfalls don't when we don't receive rainfall at the right time, you know there is an opportunity for you to use solar to pump water and irrigate your crops. And once, once you harvest these crops, then there is a whole loss that happens after harvesting of these commodities. So solar provides an opportunity for you to do post-harvest handling. Solar dryers have been spread across the country. You will take examples from the fruit growing areas, but also coffee, where people have invested in solar dryers to make sure that they reduce on the post-harvest losses. And then comes the value addition. Solar can provide us with energy that we can use to run small cottage businesses, so that you add value. Because if you don't add value to your products, then the shelf life is low, you cannot reach premium markets, and the return on your investment is low. So the opportunity is cut across the whole value chain from production to post-service, but also to the market to ensure that you're reaching the right markets. Uh, as a consumer. There are complaints of we are investing in the technologies but we are not getting value for money and the government is supposed to oversee that. I have to agree uh, with you that we still have a challenge in the market of fake products on the market and these come with lower prices as well and because you have lower prices people tend to go for th that which is affordable and once they use it and doesn't work for a long time they lose confidence. So as government, we still have an appeal task to ensure that we stop the fake products on the market. We have some standards through the UNBS, the National Bureau of Standards, that we put in place to ensure that all consumers, are meet, all, all produce, uh, suppliers of these products are meeting the minimum standards. And that is very critical. But again, enforcement becomes a challenge because we have so, so few or so many hands that to reach every part of this country. So there's still a problem there. But that's something that government should continue working on and we are working on to ensure that we are 
enforcing these standards that we should have. And that's why within our procurement standards, for the projects procured, those that are supported by government, we ensure that all suppliers that are pre-qualified for this purpose are meeting minimum standards for these products. As we chase the others that are meet, uh, bring their products into the market, we also want to ensure that those that are coming from government projects, for example, meet that standard and it becomes an example that indeed if the product has a problem, they are those who have had value because they bought the right products. There is the UECCC, the Uganda Energy Credit Capitalization Company. Yes. So Just talk to us as we wrap up this interview on how Ugandans can tap into its opportunities to finance uh, the integration of uh, renewable technologies in whatever they are doing. When we did the renewable energy policy in 2007, we realized that the biggest challenge as government was upfront cost or access to finance for you who is doing supply, but also me, the consumer. So in 2009, we established the UEEC, which is an, an institution of government that is supposed to bring financing lower, the, credit, the cost of credit lower. So this company, which is owned by Minister of Energy and Mineral Development, but also uh, finance, is doing what we call in our terms financial intermediation. So the number of development partners, but also money that we borrow, apart from the grants that are put within this institution, the intention is to ensure that you, the consumer, or you, the supply, supplier, will have the right access to the right financing that is patient, but also not as expensive. So the consumers out there, if you're a supplier, there are a number of financing vehicles that we've established under UE Triple C that you can go and borrow money and be able to supply products at an affordable price. And how are you creating awareness about the UE Triple C? I think there's been, uh, we just started on our market activation, so UE Triple C is going around the country, but also through other ministry departments to ensure that consumers appreciate that government has put in place some of these mechanisms that are supposed to. So we are doing market activations, we do these across. The last, I think, market activation was in Komi district where we went to speak to the consumers but also suppliers. But as I talk now, there is one going on in Mukono where we are talking about possibilities for you to get money through your ECCC for clean cooking but also other productive use of energy. Yes. On that note, thank you very much Dr. Isavier. Thank you too.